This is Donna. We have a Voltec car charger that just suddenly quit working, does not power up at all. So to get the front cover off, you have a thin Allen wrench and you just remove all the little screws. There's about six or seven of them. There's six that go all the way around. So let's get that off and then we'll continue. Be careful when you open it up. There's a little ribbon cable connected to the back that plugs into the board. And gently remove it. Now it's keyed, so when you put it back, you don't have to worry about what, how, it, how it's oriented. We have a multimeter, and you need to set it on ohms with a ringer. So when you touch the leads together, it makes a noise. There's two fuses. You put the leads on either side of each fuse. That one's good, because we hear noise. So that's not a bad fuse. Now there's one a little lower, underneath the wires. That one is dead, so we're going to go get a replacement fuse. Okay, there's a better look at the two fuses, and they are soldered on. I got a magnifying glass and what the top edge says is 20 amps 500 V and I have my little gauge here my, my micrometer I'm going to measure the length of it it's about 33 millimeters doesn't have to be exact and the, the diameter is six millimeter we have our repair supplies we have a little exacto knife we need to scrape off the conformal coating off all the components inside of our charger anything we're going to solder to we have to clear off that clear coating it's like a weatherproofing coating and then we have this inline fuse holder so we're going to cut this wire in half that you see that's connecting both ends. Then we're going to strip a quarter inch on each end. We're going to tin the ends. And then we're going to tin the ends, the leads left over from the fuse connection in the box. Keep in mind, when you cut your fuse out of your charger, do your very best to cut as close to the fuse as possible. That way the leads are as long as possible. And then we have 20 amp fuses. These are only rated 250 volts. When we get our 500 volt um, rated ones, we'll switch them out. Since we'll just be able to disconnect this, pop it out, and pop the new one in. Fuse holder with the leads coming out of it and you twist it open and then you take the fuse out of it set it aside then you take this and straighten it out as best as you can so you get it straight and then you get your wire cutters and in about somewhere approximately the middle approximately you cut it and you just cut it in half let me make sure where the middle is what's that looks like about the middle there ish pretty close it's about the middle a little bit more it's about the middle. Okay, so right around in there somewhere you cut it. All right, we cut it in half. Then we take one end and we strip the wire off. And strip off about, I don't know, a quarter inch. This. So we get this much out. It's a pretty hefty wire, pretty pretty strong wire. And then what we want to do is we want to take some 
some um, uh, solder paste, some uh, flux, and we want to squeeze a little bit out to get a little bit out, and we want to get it on the end of this wire. And I'll show you why. When we put flux on here, and then we use solder, we get solder on the end of our soldering iron. Just build it up on the tip. When you put it on here, the flux causes that solder to melt all the way through the wire and just fill that wire up with solder. And we want this wire to be filled with solder because in a minute we're going to touch it to the end that we, this is called tinning. We're going to touch the end that we tinned inside the, um, inside the Voltec charger. We're going to tin those leads that where the fuse used to go and um, where we cut them and we left a little bit of lead sticking out of the board. So when we tin this and then we tin that, all we have to do is hold these two tinned parts together with a little bit of solder that we get on our soldering iron like this. And when we hold those two parts together and we rub this solder on there, the solder on here will melt, the solder on the little lead sticking out of the board will melt, and it will glue them together. And then we'll do that to the other end, we'll put our fuse in the middle, we'll be done. Okay, so that's how we tin a lead, all right? So we need to tin the leads on our freshly cut in half um, inline connector, all right? We've soldered one end on, now we're going to do the other side over there to take and scrape off any of this this plastic or this um, um, epoxy that's on here and you scrape it off scrape it off I've already put some flux on here so you can see I scraped it off and then I put flux on here the same kind of flux that we put on the end of the wires because now we're gonna coat this with solder and then we'll have that coated with solder we'll have this end coated with solder we put the two together and hold them while we put extra solder and it welds those two together Alright, so I'm going to melt some solder onto the point of my soldering iron and then I'm going to let it start to coat all around this lead that we have sticking out here until we get a lot of solder on this lead because that solder is what our wire is going to stick to. So we want to make sure we get a lot on there. I'm going to melt these together. Now we're testing that we have continuity. Through, through the wire, through the fuse, through the other side. So actually we put a fuse back in the circuit. You follow me? And that way we can untwist this, pull a new old fuse out, put a new fuse in, and we will get continuity again. So we've actually, we actually have like a fuse in place. It's just extended through a wire and through a fuse holder. But now we have a fix and now we can tuck the, this wire out of the way and uh, put our system back together and see if it works. Remember to plug your ribbon cable back in. And it's keyed so you don't have to really worry about doing it wrong. And then put all the little screws back in. From the back. From the back. And then you can tighten them with an Allen wrench. We've completed our repair. We're going to turn our circuit breaker back on. And we're green. Plug it in to our car. There we go. We saved about five or six hundred dollars. And we hope this was helpful. Thank you.